to outside and in all circumstances. If you have the grass ball and the reactor, or you have a computer, dismantle the computer, take out the motor, put a ball on it, fill it up with CH3. Huge amount of CH3. Then fill it up. If you can get your hand on a lead with a huge amount of lead cans, these are all waters, not themselves, and you create clay that you create a shielding around the house. In the test, which we explain, you start hearing a whistle noise. This whistle noise is very much the noise you hear when people speak about UFOs. It's a loving, kind noise of shh, shh. When you hear this noise, you walk back from it to see where this noise moves from the back of your body to the front of your body. The point when you see the transfer of the noise, that whistling noise, is the point of your shield. This is the parameter which means you are safe in. So what you need to do, I was teaching this to Armin in the past few days. He is going very much fast in this direction, and Armin has heard the voice, the noise, so he can explain to you exactly what to look for. What you do, you get a motor, computer motor, you place a ping pong ball, CH3, to create the maximum boundary of the shield, you use lead or, or sulfur. Be careful, if you use sulfur, you do not create sulfuric acid when you use it as water or mixed in the water. There is a high possibility. So you have to understand what you're doing. Sulfur for the body of the man is much better than lead because sulfur is part of our body. It was part of the structure of our body. So you put lead, gas, water, or sulfur in this container, run at a higher speed, you create a shield. What you do, you walk back from this shield till the noise moves from the back of your body into the front. When it moves, this is your shield. This is the boundary of the shield you have created. This is important. The noise, if you don't hear the noise, when you have such a mixture, it means the shield is too far out and is weak. What happens? The shield can be tens of meters away, kilometers away. What you have to do is to change the percentage of the lead or sulfur to a higher dosage that you increase the gravitational and you bring the boundary close. This is important. This is how you make the shielding. You need a massive gravitational absorption with a dimensional shielding. This is your ACES tent. No radiation. If you get the mixture right, no radiation should be able to pass this boundary. This boundary allows you to move in and out because your body is in a gans state and the shield you created is a gans shield. X-rays, gamma rays, nuclear materials are in a matter state. They will not be able to pass the boundary. It's impossibility. So, not only you protect yourself, but you create a protection environment. Never walk out of the boundary. This is the disaster. Stay with the boundary you create. Some of you, you might see shimmers. Stay within the boundary of the shimmers. 
you can start doing these are the tests of building the first spaceship. So you are in a way not only learning how to protect yourself, you become masters of the spaceship development. It is important that you continuously keep for the time being till you start seeing physical parameters in your head, the noise level. It's very much like when you were a child and you played tick tick. You remember? You used to tick tick on the table. If you became close, it became too hot. You play the same game. You come close to the shield, never pass it. If you have to move out of a position, if you have to move out of the area which is heavily contaminated, you place this system within one meter of yourself. You make your height, your family, and you make sure everybody stays. You move the unit with you. So you can, under full protection, to walk away. Make sure, in the case of the condition of radioactive release, the ground level is always covered, which means you cannot pick up radiation dust from the ground floor up. As a nuclear physicist, in my training, I've been trained how to protect myself, even if we are sitting with the proximity of the nuclear reactor fully contaminated. At that time, we did not have access to this knowledge. I have stood on open doors, nuclear reactors in Queen Mary College in the of London, when the testing was more important than shutting the system into safety. We overcame all the locks with a solid tape, we just blocked the keys, we could keep the reactor running. And a number of the scientists, a number of the students always used to get contaminated. We used to get a wash, it was famous for you. You, you jumped it, you wash it. Now you have a material which is at your reach. A number of people, out of their stupidity, have called Queen Mary College. Do you have a nuclear department? No. He's never paid. They never had a nuclear. They never, they don't train nuclear. Of course, nuclear department was closed 25 years ago because the English system was transferred to PWRs. So we had to supply my certificate to the Belgian government as a nuclear physicist, accepted, checked by the university, that they allow the Keshe Foundation Research and Development to be involved and be able to carry nuclear tests. We have a license for it. We've been given permission on the Keshe Foundation Research and Development. It's on our mandate, some seven pages of it, that we can handle nuclear material because of the confirmation of the certificate by Criminal College of Belgium Government. So, please understand. Actually, it took us about three months because the university would not release the paper. It says, you already should have one. I said, I stuck it on the toilet roll. So we had to sign documents that they could release one. But if you are interested, go to the Belgian government. They show you a copy of the, uh, what do you call it, certificate of the university. This is for those who always create negative information that they exist. If we didn't have Cash Foundation Research and Development and BBVA as a company, in Belgium could not be established. So, we go back to this. Understand the safety parameters of using the knowledge you have. Very simple. You have to protect three environments. You protect your environment with your system. You protect your body with the, what we call CO2, plasma, liquid plasma, just the water. And then if there is a contamination within the area where you are, you have to be able to wash it. You have to be able to neutralize it.
And the only way you neutralize the nuclear material, the way it's done in TEPCO, in Fukushima, is you add to it to dilute it to reduce its energy. The waters are used in Fukushima is the same. They add so much gas into the environment and it gets washed into the sea that any radiation is absorbed by the gas and then is reduced its energy and it gets locked into the system of the gas. What happens is your plasma of the gas and this is alpha or beta or radiation or whatever, their energy gets locked into the system of the gas because it's a field, it's not a matter state, so very rapidly you neutralize the radioactive material.